Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and I thank you again for joining us on the broadcast at WJMM 99.1 or on the podcast. Now, as we continue with this Names of God series, I hope that yesterday's message with the odd combination, at least in our thinking, odd combination of names, which included a God that makes us holy, is, is all compassionate, and at the same time, jealous. We must remember that these are God's attributes and not succumb to our finite and fleshly concepts of who he is. Only in so doing can we truly come to know and love him according to his truth and not our feeble and contrived ideas that attempt to make him in our image instead of allowing him to transform us into the image of himself, his son, Jesus Christ, by his, his own dwelling within us by his Holy Spirit. Now, if you're listening each day at WJMM 99.1, thank you. And, and spread the word, let others know, 11 o'clock every weekday. But you can also listen to these and others at WJMM.com, at least today's and the previous two days, if you go to the podcast tab near the upper right on their page and then click on the Love and Lordship links. You can get even more than that if you go to loveandlordship.com, spell it all out, loveandlordship.com, and click on the, you can see videos, you can see uh, the articles and read those, and you can find the, the podcast as well. Uh, also, if you'd like, contact me. I'd love to hear from you. Those who do, I, I thank you and I appreciate that for your encouragement and your questions and comments. You can do that at loveandlordship at gmail.com loveandlordship at gmail.com. Our Names of God, part six, and I told you it's going to be like 25 of these, but they're powerful. They're incredible. I pray that our, our vision and our goal and our prayer is that we are knowing God more, loving him more fully, and thus fulfilling the first and greatest command before we move on with the next series, which helps us fulfill the second and greatest command. The sixth part is our continued seeking and studying God's name so that we know, love, and honor him for all that he is and all that he does in our lives and in our world. As I've done in some of the previous messages focusing on God's names, we look to Scripture to allow the Holy Spirit to point us to the incredible power and honor that God attaches to his name or names, and understand this is really for our sake, so that we will revere or honor his name and who he is with all the gravity and respect that is rightfully deserved. This should also remind us of our goal and our prayer, as I said, fulfilling the first and greatest command, discipling people in that so we can learn how to love ourselves and then die to self to love others. You see, he has revealed his names to us so that we will humbly bow before him and honor him in every way. His name or names clearly are to show us that he alone is worthy. So with that said, today's anchor text, as I began doing, about his name is from Psalm 6930. The psalmist says, I will praise the name of God with song and exalt him with thanksgiving. See, he's telling us we need to know him. We need to know his names. We need to know his character. Not just I go to church and I read and, and I hear a message every now and then or I do some service. We need to get to know him. So we continue in this part six uh, on the names of knowing and loving God by getting to know him through all the names revealed in Scripture. This next name is a powerful and much needed name of God for us found in Deuteronomy 431. We, it was in there yesterday's. We finished yesterday. If you want to go back and listen to it. We had El Rakum, the God of compassion. See, it is a derivative of El Rakum from yesterday's program. He is the God of compassion because he is El Rakamim, the God who is merciful or the God of mercy. Just as with the Israelites, we are in great need of his compassion, but we could never and would never receive it if it were not for his mercy. Simply defined, Mercy is not receiving what we deserve. I deserve death and hell. I deserve prison. I deserve punishment. Jesus took all of that. You see, he proclaims in this text, Moses does, the Holy Spirit through Moses, that he will never abandon, forget, or destroy his people, even though that is what their sinful lives deserved, as do ours apart from Christ. In rebellion, the Israelites deserve death and hell. 
But God in his great mercy told them that whenever they would return to and seek him, he would not abandon them, but would forgive them and give them what they could never earn or deserve. Apart from Christ, we are all sinners who deserve hell, but El Rachamim in Christ gives us mercy through salvation and eternal life with him. Something we could never earn and don't deserve. All who believe in Christ as Savior and submit to him as Lord receive God's mercy. There are many texts in the New Testament where you see the mercy of God in the person of the Godhead, but the man of Christ, the fully God, fully man Christ. I highlight three that show us that El Rachamim is manifested to us because of Christ's humble and sacrificial gift of mercy. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, El Rachamim. Christ has forgiven and freed us by paying the price, and we mercifully don't receive hell, but do receive eternal life in Him. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5 continues with this same concept. We were are actually dead apart from Christ, but freely made alive as we believe in and accept that mercy. In Romans 12, 1, we alluded to it yesterday, being made holy. In light of all that we have mercifully been spared from in Christ, we are called to respond by giving ourselves back to God as a living sacrifice because of his mercy toward us. He's the one that made us holy and acceptable. Think about those for a minute. As you do so, we move on into our next name of God, which is both comforting and at times, if I'm, and I hope you're being honest, it's frightening. Now, why in the world would I say that? Well, we talked about a jealous God yesterday and had to see it from his truth and love perspective, not our fleshly lust perspective. You see, because this name, El Hani Iman, El Hani Iman means the faithful God and is revealed in Deuteronomy 7, 9, where God is telling the Israelites through Moses that he is the faithful God and will be to all those who obey him to a thousand generations, literally forever. That's faithfulness. See, if if there was ever one moment that God wasn't faithful, then he's not faithful. We can count on him as he is truthful and his truth will never change. And that's why at times it can be frightening. He is just as faithful to give me the fruit of destruction when I choose to sow in the flesh as he is to give me the fruit of eternal life when I sow in the spirit. The same is true for you. He cannot be mocked and cannot lie. He is the faithful God. That's why Paul in Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, don't deceive yourselves. God can't be mocked. In every situation, good and bad, by our choices, his faithfulness is loving, even if it doesn't feel like it to me or to you or others. Now, having already referred to his faithfulness in the New Testament, we also see that Christ is called faithful and true and will someday return in all of his glory with that very name. That's the one he's going to have when he comes in on the horse. Faithful and true in Revelation 19, 11 through 15. Huh, I thought God was God alone. He is, but he's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we see this in the names that are given throughout Scripture. Are you walking in the Spirit so that his faithful response is bringing eternal life in and through you, even here and now? You can. Or are you sowing in the flesh and reaping destruction destruction and wondering why? You understand the fear now? If he's working in that way, he's being faithful and loving. He wants you to respond accordingly. He is faithful. Everything he does is loving. So choose his spirit by his grace through faith in Christ, the faithful and true. Can you truly say, I know he is faithful and will show me what I'm sowing and reaping because he loves me? Our final name today in this message is El Haggadol, simply the great God. It's revealed in Deuteronomy 10, 17. Here we find a recounting of God. Notice how many of these are found in Deuteronomy, the giving of the law and and showing us that we can't get there in the law, only in Christ. So Christ had to come as God in the flesh so that we could understand and come into a relationship with the God of all these names, the one, the same God, the one and only God. 
Here in Deuteronomy 10, 17, we find a recounting of God giving the second tablets of the Ten Commandments to Moses and the Israelites after the people had rebelled against him and Aaron had led them in crafting a golden calf as their idol when God had given Moses the original tablets in Exodus 20. God doesn't pull any punches in letting them know who he is as he literally gives them a second chance with this second set of commandments proving that he is both faithful and gracious. He is gracious, but he is no less great and will not compromise, show any partiality, or consider any bribery to do so. Go check it out, Deuteronomy 10, 17. Christ as God in the flesh is seen as the great God in Titus 2.13 and proclaiming God the Father and Son as one, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. An incredible mystery that we struggle to understand. But as we continue to search out and study all the marvelous names of God, we can be so thankful that Emmanuel came in the flesh as God with us to redeem us, set us free, and give us an eternity with him. Now that's a great God. Wrap it up with food for thought here. God is El Rachamim, building on the God of compassion, El Rakum, the God who is merciful or the God of mercy. And even though we don't deserve, he deserve it, He gives us good things and watches over us. He will never leave or forsake us. And even though we deserve nothing from Him, He is merciful to us and pours out His love on us. He is El Hani Iman, the faithful God. And that should be an incredible comfort to us as we walk with him in the world that is increasingly opposed to and rejecting him. He will be with us and do exactly what he says he will do. And he does it because he loves us. And he is El Hagadol, the great God. And we can count on his greatness because he never fails and never compromises. Four action items, as always, the first two. Read the scriptures in the message and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number two, write down what each of these names in this message means to you. Number three, choose one name from this article and describe how God has revealed himself to you in this way. And number four, which of the names in this message appeals to you the most and why? Now join us tomorrow. We're going to continue this series on and on. I hope it is. I hope you are soaking it up. That's my prayer. I know the Holy Spirit's moving to those of you who are open to this. So join us and invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies. We all need to hear this and know God more fully. And Jesus Christ has made a way. Remember, you can get our book, The Authority of Love, second, spell it out, S-E-C-O-N-D, second edition at Amazon.com. You can also find more information about us at loveandlordship.com and contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. You can donate. Donate there at loveandlordship.com. There is a give tab, upper right corner. Click on that one minute or two at the most, and you can give one time or ongoing. Thank you. All, all donations are tax deductible. And if you're praying and you know we're a kingdom ministry, but you don't sense God leading you to give to us, keep praying until he shows you who he wants you to give to. And then be faithful. There's a couple other ways I'll try and get to those tomorrow. Uh, one, is, well, one is Cash App, and it's hash, or it's a, a Cash App. It's dollar sign love and lordship with both L's capitalized and all together. You can find that, or you can make the donation by mail to Love and Lordship, sent to 324 Timothy Drive, 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky 40356. Greatly appreciate that, and if not, I appreciate your prayers. Thank you for joining us. Thanks always for those prayers and thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser Encounter and a little bit later, Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams and you're listening to The Authority of Love.